what about people that the wounds were not necessarily caused by another? What about those who've had self-inflicted wounds, maybe from bad sexual choices in previous relationships before they had a conversion and they've just done some stuff now that they regret, but they don't even know where to begin untangling that mess. You know, how does a person who has made poor decisions begin to unravel those things, begin to make the line straight again? What would you say would be some concrete steps that that person can take to realize, hey, that the future doesn't need to look like the past and, you know, and how to forgive yourself? How would you suggest somebody move on from those things? Yeah, I think first of all is, is coming to a place where they can trust to start to open it up like they do after you give a talk, they come up and they start sharing that. That's the beginning of it. They're starting to open it up. But there's usually a lot of shame and self-condemnation. And there's also a sense of, I'm, I'm too broken, it's never going to change. And those belief systems are really what's what's critical. The, the experience is in the past, but the belief systems continue in the present. And so what needs to shift is what the person believes about themselves. And so, we're, again, similar way, we walk back into those areas, like we'll go back to the beginning when it happened, and we'll just invite the Holy Spirit to show them what he, what he wants them to see about, the, you know, what was going on, what did they experience, what do they believe about themselves. And that's really critical. Is So somebody, let's say, is 12 years old and they get involved in porn, and, and it's innocent at some level when they get exposed to it. They begin to get addicted to it. There's this, uh, you know, progressive movement into sexual relationships and, and just the shame increases, you know, just this sense of shame and unworthiness and, and fear of being exposed. Uh, all of that, until they look at all that and recognize that there's a common thread, the common thread is, is both the unmet need that they're trying to get met there and, and actually a holy desire that they're looking for something good. But in addition to that, there's all that shame that comes in from the, from the disordered sexual uh, activities. And again, it's, it's only the Lord that can speak to somebody's heart. You know, one thing is confession. They, they go to confession, that's great, but there's a deeper shame that's there. And so uh, confession is invaluable, but I often experience that confession and a deeper kind of prayer and a sharing where you can open those places up are, are critical together. And so we lead people into prayer. And when Jesus speaks to somebody's heart, uh, you're not bad, you're not dirty, or I've, I've had people experience them just being, seeing themselves ashamed and naked and, and Jesus comes and lifts their head and looks into their eyes. And it's a very real experience. And when that transformation happens, all of a sudden they can lift from that place where they've been stuck. Could, could you speak more into that? You had mentioned about, you know, that the person had a legitimate unmet need that was good, that they were in pursuit of, and, you know, maybe they grabbed onto this other thing in hopes that that would quench their thirst, but, you know, maybe just the reassurance of, hey, what you wanted was good. Yeah, what you grabbed onto didn't fulfill you, but, you know, it, it isn't all you're bad, you're evil, you did these stupid, sexual, you know, shameful, grave, immoral, you know, just shame, shame, shame. But like, no, you were after something good, you know, is, is just a recognition of realizing that your desires at the core had something good that they were yearning for, help them kind of forgive themselves a little bit more? Yeah, it, it helps not only to forgive yourself, but to understand, oh, that's what I was looking for. You know, oftentimes, and you probably had this experience too, but oftentimes I'll ask people if they're into pornography, what are you looking at? What, what are you desiring in the pornography? I'm not justifying the looking at pornography, but I'm saying there's something you're looking for. And you find that it's very unique for each individual person. It's not one size fits all. They all go and they're looking for something very particular. And I'll say to them, okay, I understand you have a lot of shame in that area. But what is it that you're really looking for? What's what's the desire that you have there? And then from there, when they begin to say the desire, I can say, can you see that that desire is a good desire? Did you have that desire met in your family, in your relationships? Well, no. And then they start getting into the woundedness, you know, the areas of 
okay, this is what was going on when I started to get involved in that. And all of that gives understanding. It doesn't give excuse, but it gives understanding for what they're looking for. And then I was saying, okay, so if you had a way to meet that need outside of porn, would you want that? And I, I haven't met anybody yet that doesn't want that. They sometimes don't believe that it's possible, but they, you know, they desire the real thing because they recognize the the rest of it's so artificial and just leaves them more enchained and more cut off and more isolated. Now, one thing that I've noticed, you know, when I've talked to individuals who start to realize this stuff is they tend to go to maybe one or two extremes, like one of like over spiritualizing the healing process. Well, it's just about confession and more rosaries and penances or whatever. Then other people, you know, takes a purely humanistic approach of like, well, I'll do the counseling, I'll do the therapy, I'll do the emotional heavy lifting, but each of them only get half healed, so to speak. It's almost like they're not treating themselves in a fully human way. How do you go about trying to open somebody's eyes? The fact that, Hey, your heart needs some healing and your soul does as well. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the whole uh, foundation of our ministry is, is integrating those. So uh, at, we start with teaching. We just start with teaching about the integration of our faith from the standpoint of healing. And that that's why Jesus came. Jesus came to heal us. He came to heal our broken hearts, to set us free, to take away our shame and give us uh, his honor and, and take our mourning and comfort us. And so just starting there with the truth of what the gospel is, and the gospel isn't a cover. You know, our religious practices aren't a cover for our healing. Our religious practices are meant to bring us into that. So even all the sacraments are intended to bring us into that healing experience with Jesus because it's it's his love that's healing. It's the only thing that's healing. So somebody that goes to counseling and they're opening up, and it's totally a secular approach, if they're not guided in a particular way, they're going to get derailed and end up doing stuff that's destructive. Uh, at the same time, if somebody's just practicing their faith and not dealing with the areas of their heart and has nowhere to go, they're just covering up uh, all the stuff that's there. And so it's the integration of those two that's really critical. And the teaching, but also the experience. I, I, again, I find that most of the change happens when people experience it for themselves. So that if they're sitting down, let's say with you, after a conference, and you've integrated it already, and they're sharing with you, they can't help but see that you're a person who has seen how both of those things fit together. And, and I think that people experience that at our conferences also. It's, you know Sister Miriam uh, quite well, and she, she's one of our speakers. And you know when she gets up and speaks and she shares her story, uh, just like when you guys share your story, it's, it just draws people to a hunger. It's like, this is authentic. This is real. This is somebody who's speaking a reality of both those worlds, of both dealing with the pain and having a real spirituality. And I think that attraction then causes them to hunger it for, for themselves. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that little clip, but if you want to see the whole episode where this came from, just click the link here. And in the meantime, we want to invite you to help us share this message. And there's a couple things you can do real quick. Number one, if you like or comment or share this video, YouTube will actually show it to more people. Also, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell. We release videos every single day and you'll be notified as soon as those come out. If you want to help us also to spread this message, you can support us at patreon.com slash Jason Everett. That helps us to create these videos and show them to the whole world. God bless.